Hello and welcome to module 11 video 2 on IP addressing. Okay, so on the last video we uh, we reviewed on how to convert binary to decimal decimal to binary. So now we're going to move a step ahead and go in and talk about the classless IPv4 and classful IPv4 addressing. We'll look at the five classes of IPv4 and then hopefully we'll get to introduce the logical and and you'll know what the sub subnet mask mask address is okay so please hear what i want you to do i'm going to write everything that you see on this screen okay and i'm going to also write some stuff in there so you add that as well when i do that all right all right so and please you know you can always pause and listen because i want you to listen and uh, this is very important we're not going to go into um the slides of chapter 11. So all of our discussions will be right in here. So this is going to take maybe a video or two or three. We're going to go through everything that you need to know about IP addressing, IPv4 subnetting, everything, and all the different types of questions that you might be asked on the CCNA test. So by reviewing all of these IP addressing videos, you should, um, you should know everything that you need to know about IPv4 from subnetting all the way to the different types of questions that you could be asked on a CCNA test. All right, so let's get started. Um, don't forget, whenever we're done with the video, everything that you write, you upload that as homework. The INA, the Internet um, Assigned Numbered Authority, this is the big authority that manages all the IP addresses all over the world. So they broke up the, the, the whole world into five areas. The African network, the Asian, the American, the Latin America, the South America, and the Caribbeans, and the North America. Uh, I'm sorry, the North America is right here. And then you have the Europeans down here with the, along with the Middle East. So all the ISPs, if they need to get any IP addresses, global IP addresses, public IP addresses, they go to these regional internet registries. That's what they are called, right? five regionals so the whole world is broken into five regions and depending on where you live that's where your service provider goes and purchases or gets ip addresses so but the iana is the one that maintains and manages all of them all right now let's talk about the five classes of the ipv4 now the word classful okay here's the here's that when you have a packet and it's ready to go. There are two things that are on the packet, the source IP address and the destination IP address, right? The source IP address, you get it from your DHCP server. You get your destination IP address from the DNS server. So when a packet comes into a router, remember the router is like a post office. The router needs to look up the destination IP address to figure out what network it needs to send, where this uh, is located. So when it looks at the destination IP address, it needs to look up a chart called the routing table to find out where, they have, where does it have to send it to according to the destination IP address. This is like the post office looking up on your package destination zip code and then trying to figure out where the zip code is located around uh, the nation and then package it and send it to the next nearest uh, post office with that location. So for example, if you live in the Northeast and your package is going to, to San Francisco, so when it looks up the zip code, it knows that the zip code is located in the West, it's gonna package it and send it to the, you know, uh, to the next, to the nearest post office to it, but West, not North, not South, West, according to the zip code. Same thing with the routers. The routers look at the destination IP address, try to find out, and then by looking at the destination IP address, then it looks up a chart called the routing table. And in the routing table, the chart will, the routing table will tell it which should it go west, north, or east. It sends it to an exit interface, typically a serial ports. Then the serial ports will encapsulate them and send them out to the next nearest router. All right, but here's the problem in the old days. The old days I'm talking about in the 19, early 1980s. Uh, routers were classful. The IP addresses were broken down into four 
five um, classes. So the router would look at, it needs to decide the, you know, by the way, before I get into that, the IP address has two addresses in it, unlike a zip code. Zip code is just tells you where the area is, right? But the IP address has two things, has the network address, which is what the zip code is, and the host, who you are in that zip code, in that area. Routers are not concerned with the host portion of the IP. All they care about is the network portion. So in the very beginning, they need to find, what they did is they broke up the IP address into five classes. And depending on which class you are in, then the router will know which portion of the IP address is the network and which portion is the host. That's why we call them classful IP addresses because the router needs to know which class the IP address is in so we can figure out what the network portion is. Now, today, that we changed that a little bit when we started doing subnetting. So classful today, what it means is if everybody is using the same mask address, which we'll talk about that later on, and we'll talk about classless as well. All right? But here are the five classes of IP addresses. So when they broke them down, we'll just do a number one for now. Classes A, B, C, or D. So if the first address begins between 1 and 127, then the first host is, the first byte is your network address, and the last three is your host. If the first, if the first byte begins between 128 and 191, then the first two bytes is going to be your network, and the last two are going to be your host. If the first byte begins between 192 to 223, then the first two bytes, I'm sorry, the first three bytes is your network address, and the last one is your host. If the first byte begins between uh, 224 and 239, okay, there's no designation for network and host portions because this address is used for multicasting. And multicasting is sending a packet to several users in the LAN. If your IP address begins between 240 and 255, again, any address like that will um, indicate that you are, uh, this is for internet experimentation. So anyone that doing a research and wants to test something out, they can use addresses between 240 and 255. All right. Um, so the way the routers do it is they look at the first bit, by the way. When you convert 1 to 127 to binary, the most significant bit, which is the bit to the left, will always be zero. So what routers do is they look at the first bit. If it's a zero, they immediately know it's a class A address, and they immediately know they know the first eight bits is their network address. If you ever convert 128 to 191, the first two bits will always be zero, one zero. So what the routers do, if they look at the first bit, and they see a one, they move over. They see a zero, they stop, and they know it's class B. So as soon as they see a zero, because they move twice. And they know that it's in class B because the first two bits will be one, will always be one zero. And then they immediately will say, hey, the first two bytes is your network address. If they go to the first bit and they see a one, they move over, they see another one, and then they move over. The third time they see a zero, they stop, and they know it's in class C, and so on. So these are the most significant bits, that's what the MSP is for, so that the routers can decide if the net, uh, you know, if this is in class A, B, or C, and depending on which class you're in, then I'll know what the network portion of the IP is. All right, so here's an example, and we'll, uh, this is the mask, we'll talk about that later on. These are the default mask addresses. The mask is designed to mask the host portion of the IP which we'll discuss later on, revealing the network portion. But for now, don't worry about these. We'll worry about that in a few minutes. So for example, let me give you an, here's an example. Let's say 178.16.156.154 IP address. So the first thing that the router does, of course, this is going to be in binary. It's going to look at the first bit. It's going to see a one. It moves over. It's going to see a zero. And it's going to say, hey, this is class B. And that means the first Two bytes is your network address, right? But for us, when you see a number like this and it's, you're asked on a test, what class is this IP address? Well, it's in class B. Why? 
because once the first bite is between 128 and 191. And if it's class B, then the network portion is the first two bytes, right? 178.16. And typically when you write the network address, make sure that the host is all zeros. All right, what's the poor, what's the host portion? It's the last two bytes. So it is in this case 156.254. All right. Now, what this says is the network address. Remember, these this is eight bits, eight bits, right? Eight and eight. That means the first 16 bits is your network address if you're in class A. In I'm sorry, in class B. If you're in class A. The first eight bits is your network address, right? If you're in class C, the first 24 bits is your network address. So the way we say that is by writing a slash. So if you see a slash, this is saying that the first 24 bits is your network address. Now, this was a little bit more of a challenge in the old days, especially it was okay when, you know, the internet was only for the Department of Defense. But now it moved public for the whole world to use. And this became, you know, this is very, this restrictions of having classes, it became um, a problem because it limited the number of network addresses available. So instead of being classful, so what they decided to do, what if I give you, what if I, for this problem, what if I gave you a mask and you put this mask on top of this IP address and when you took put it on top, you would mask the host portion of the IP, revealing the network portion. So we don't care about classes. I'm going to use the mask to mask the host portion of the IP so I can see what the network portion is. And if I can do that, I don't have to be eight. The network portion, I can mask, for example, if I mask um, 12 bits in the host, I'm going to reveal 20 bits for the network address, right? In the old days with classful, your network address can only be 8 bits, 16, or 24, right? But if I create a mask that masks um, 12 bits, because remember the IPv4 address is 32, if I mask 12 bits, then I'm only revealing 20. So by using a mask, um, I'm a little bit more flexible. I can create more network addresses. So the network address can be any bits from 32 all the way down to, you know, it could be, you know, thir thir almost 30 bits. You got to leave a couple of bits for the host, right? So the mask is always written in slash. So the slash number indicates how many, the first bits of the IP address, for example, in slash 16 indicates that the first, excuse me, the first 16 bits of the IP address is the network portion. Now, the way you would write this, you write it in decimal format. This is saying slash 16 is typically written as, you know, 16 ones. So the way to write it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16 bits. That's what slash 16 is. And then you fill the rest with zero. Another eight zeros. So how do you convert that back to decimal? You write it 255.255.0.0. So six slash 16 is this is the mask. How does the router use the mask with the IP address to figure out the network address? We will talk about that when we this is called classless, by the way, right? So the routers no longer need the uh the to know what the network what the what class the IP address is in, right? And so they'll always use the mask. So that's why we call them classless, because they don't need to know what the I, they're, all, they're using the subnet mask address to figure out the network portion of the IP. All right, we'll get back to that. But for now, here's class A, right? What class is this in? Class A, right? Class A, the first byte is the network address, and the last is your host. So this is a slash eight, right? Because the first eight bits is your network address. All right, I'm going to stop right here. And on the next video, we'll continue with the logical end and we'll see how the router is using the mask to figure out the network portion of the IP. So write everything that I asked you to write, and I'll see you on the next video.